Hey guys, so in the last video of this series, we <coughs> check out the most advanced motor on the market right now. So in this video, we will look into gears. For gears, I picked these Solink CNC low weight helical DSG gears. I mean, how special is that? First time I seen somebody making a helical DSG and I really enjoy the lightweight redu weight reduction. And I think this is a good gearbox to pair with these motors with the one directional bearing because the stock gearbox does not indeed have an anti-reversal. So this gives you the possibility of using the pre-caulking on your ETU without having to modify the gearbox like I did here, which is cutting off some material, not install the screw and use the screw post as a access for the anti-reversal. So to shim these gears, <clears throat> there are so many videos about the shimming gears, so I will just go through the most important part of shimming the gears. First, you get one of these. It's an alignment checking tool for your gearbox. I 3D printed this one. Okay, so basically the two studs go into the hole where your bevel gear is. And this will be perpendicular to your gear. And then you put on your grip and your motor plate and plate and this post should be in the center of this hole. I'm hoping that you will do good on this. And it's not centered, but I can tilt it to make it tilt it and shift. So shift forward and tilt forward. Then we are in the middle. Okay, that's a good news. Means that means I don't have to shave anything, since there is no. If it's still tilted, no matter how I do it, it's gonna be bad. So now I know that when I secure the grip with the four screws, yeah, I come with four. Some of them have to. I just push the grip forward and I install the front two screws first to bring it forward. In that case, I will have the correct alignment for my motor. Then you no longer need this tool, but it's handy. Next one is check your motor to bevel height if you have enough of it. Some people like call this to shim the bevel. Basically install the spring and see how high your motor goes up without the base. <clears throat> it's harder to check in the case of evil because how recessed it is. Okay, so it does not stick out. The motor neck does not stick out. Okay, it's not sitting flush. I would install this the proper way, like putting the grip, putting the motor for you to check, but in that case, we won't be able to see anything because the way Evo is built is a bummer. So we just have the gears inside. We know the motor does not go past this light. So let, let's, it's more or less around here inside the grip. So we see how deep it can go. Which is not bad, we can go quite deep. We can go flush. Okay, that gives us about a millimeter of height adjustment. And now we know we want the gear to sit on the motor at that height. And you basically just open it up. You shim from the bottom of the sector that when you plug in the motor, it doesn't f the the sector gear doesn't fall uh, the um the bevel gear doesn't 
fell down anymore. And you start shimming the top. <coughs> or, the, <coughs> or you can do the other way around. Actually, that might be better. Now I think about it. I just usually go from the bottom on the M4. So you put it it's better on this way, on the other side. So you do on this side and you push in the motor. You don't feel it. The motor can go in. You start shimming it up until that your motor is just going deeper than um, what where you want the height to be, like where it's touching the axis of the uh, bevel. Like touching here, you don't want it to touch here. You want it sitting here. So basically you check. Now we know that with this gear inside, the motor can sit flush when it's hitting the... Uh, yeah, so when it hits the bevel, it's sitting, the neck of the motor is sitting flush with the gearbox. So we, not, we want it here. We want where the, uh, the gap is. So basically you ship, shim this thing up until when you take your motor. Of course, it don't go up. Yeah, you're trying to keep it center. Then you go here and you feel like it's resistant, that your, your teeth on the motor are meshed. When you get these two right, the rest of the gears are very easy to shim. You just make sure that uh, they are not over, overly tight inside your gearbox, so you have to tighten a few screws. Just hand clamping is not enough. It, the screws always tighten it more than you can. Then these teeth, these two face, they don't touch. Nowadays, gears are very strong, so you don't have to listen to the old tutorials where people say, hey, you just leave a hair line space between them. That's really, really hard to get. I mean, regularly, your shims are 0 0.1, then 0 0.2, 0 0.3. You can leave it with a fair bit of a space. These are steel gears, like these will never break. Like these days, what breaks in the gearbox is probably the most common broken thing, or the bearings if they are not good. These CNC gears and the torque of these motors, like I demonstrated, it's dial the whole mode. This motor, if you use these ones, dial it to the slowest speed, make a test run, all sounds good, then keep going from that. These gears, they also will not break. If you use a decent piston, like a steel rack one. This is uh, what I'm gonna use in this one, a retro arms, a DSG rack. They will not give in. So yeah, just uh, two steps. The most important step, check your motor alignment. And then on these helical gears, if you have a regular gears, just make sure like it's not too tight, like it's not squeezing, which usually you can do it by adjusting the height of the motor. That's why the adjustment exists. But the helicals you really want is nice. It's between sounding really, really good or even worse than stock, sort of thing. All right, so next video, I will have this input up and we take a look at it.